Hello, this is Pastor Tony Collins. I'm the senior pastor of the House of Worship in Oak Ridge, Tennessee. And I want to tell you a story. Um, a few years ago, about eight or nine years ago, actually, um, we helped plant a church uh, in Mexico in the Playa del Carmen area. And while we were down there, we were confronted, if you will, by the, um, the truth, the reality uh, of homeless children. Just, just a few points of fact, if you will, in regards to uh, street children to homeless children um, in this area. First of all, uh, these children are at a higher risk of danger uh, than, than anyone else. They go through uh, severe hunger, they go through depression, and in many cases, uh, most cases I would say, that the food that they have is waste food, which is a bad source of nutrition, which leads to malnutrition, and, and sometimes it can even lead to death. These are children that are on the street that are dealing with all the issues that are on the street. They're dealing with criminals, they're dealing with violence, they're dealing with, uh, with, with drugs. And so our, our desire, our call, if you will, uh, for this community is uh, to build a home for the homeless, to build a home for, for homeless children. And, and there, is, there is no home. There is no home for homeless children um, in, in, in this area. And so really what we need now is we need the resources. We need the funds to be able to do that. And we're estimating that um, it's going to cost about $250,000 to buy the property and to build um, this, this facility. And so if, if you won't give, who's going to give? If you won't help us, who's going to help us? Whatever it is that you give, that God tells you to give, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, by his power and his authority, that a hundred times what you give will come back to you. So thank you in advance for your gift. We praise God for you, and we praise God for the vision. We praise God for the mission that he's given us to be able to touch the lives in Mexico of the lives of homeless children. Uh, bless you. Praise God for you, and we give him all the glory in advance. Amen. Hey everybody, how are you? This is Pastor Tony Collins from the House of Worship in Oak Ridge, Tennessee. Hope you are walking by faith and not by sight and that you are feeling the blessings of God uh, in, in your life. I want you to know that God wants to bless you. He's looking for ways to bless you. Tonight I have a word for you. I want to continue uh, to follow up, if you will, on the message that we preached uh, last week or that we shared with you last week and that is have you been transfigured or have you been changed? Have you been changed by the word of God? Have you been changed by the presence of God? God loves us desperately. God loves us uh, in, in an incredible, incredible way but God loves us so much that he will not leave us the same. Let's go check out the message and I'll be back in a few moments. This idea is a change in our externality that happens from the inside to the outside. This, this, this is not about something that I encounter in the world that changes me from the outside to the inside. This is not about a, a, a class that I take. It's not about a video that I watched. It's not about a book that I read unless it's this book in the name of Jesus Christ. This is about a change of, on the outside of me that is wrought from the inside by the supernatural power of the Holy Ghost. This change is essential for children of God because it reveals the essential glory of the Spirit of God that has been deposited in the authentic child of God. Let me say that again. 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 This change is essential for the, the, the transformation, the transfiguration is essential for the world to know that we really are who we say that we are in the name of Jesus Christ. That is the essentiality of the Holy Spirit that's been put on the side of me that it must and it will come out. It has not been put inside that it might be locked up and it might be a light that is put under a table for you cannot hide a candle in the darkness in the name of Jesus Christ. And I am in a world that is full of darkness so the light will the divinity that's in my humanity 
it will reveal itself. Matthew 12, and, uh, 17 and 2 says, and his face did shine as a sun. Woo. My. Imagine, you can't even look at the sun. So his face was like the sun. The face of the S-O-N is like the face of the S-U-N. His face was like the sun and his raiment as white, his raiment as, white as light. Uh, uh, Mark said that his, his, his garments became so radiant in verse 3 and so exceedingly white that the, the, no, no, no earthly, this, this was not something that happened because of something that happened on earth. Right? That God revealed this incredible luminant light that was on the inside of him. Child of God, authentic believer, disciple of Jesus Christ, we have an incredible light that has been deposited on the inside of us that is waiting for you and I to reveal it as we reveal our commitment to living life according to the word of God. It's going to get hot sometime. Oh, help me, Jesus. Huh? Huh? He's, he's going to put you in some places you don't want to be. Oh, thank you, Lord. He's going to send you some places you don't want to go. He's going to tell you to do some stuff you don't want to do and say some stuff you don't want to say in the name of Jesus Christ. There's going to be some stuff that you like you're going to have to put down. Some stuff you don't like you're going to have to pick up in the name of Jesus Christ. But when we do it his way, light is going to reveal itself. There's an author that says this way, there are, there's a light that some Christians have that we give off. It's like the moon. It's a dim one. You can look directly at the moon without any effect on your person whatsoever, but that's not the light that God would have for us to shine. The moon is not the sun. The sun shows up and lights up everything. Not only does it light up everything, that it's, it's so bright that nothing is hidden, and it changes everything around it. It brings warmth. It brings. It stimulates growth. Uh, when the light of our good deeds shines through into the public eye, when the light of Jesus Christ shines into the public, when the word of God that you've applied to your life uh, shines through to the public, when your commitment to God to shines through to the public, when your commitment to plan A and plan A only shines through to the public, it's effective. And when people see God in you and I, it changes things. I'm committed to Christ, to his word, to doing his way. Change happens immediately. And there is deposited in me and you this light that is so bright and so vibrant that when we reveal it, it changes everything. And so we see Christ in this scripture revealing the light. Revealing the light. And the only thing that's left and it happens automatically is there's contact by those that we are around. Mm. Yeah. yeah, 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 oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. When, when, I'm, when, I'm, when I'm committed, when I'm committed, when I'm committed, Brother Johnson, when, I, when, I, when, I, when I'm committed to doing it God's way, okay, don't, don't, don't get scraped, don't get bruised, don't get knocked down, might, bro, might, might break a leg, don't get cut, don't, it's, 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 it's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to get bloody, huh? But when I do that, there's a change that occurs in the name of Jesus Christ. And the change is so great, it's so powerful, it's so real, it's so authentic. It meets people right where they are in the name of Jesus Christ that it's impossible for them not to come in contact with it. Oh, oh, come on, man. It's impossible for people you work around in the name of Jesus Christ. If you're committed to Jesus Christ as your Lord and as your Savior, it's impossible for them not to come in contact with the supernatural power of God that's working in your life. It's impossible. So, so, so you, you see, you see, you see the, the supernatural is revealed, right? You see it in Jesus, his, his commitment. He said, man, I, I got to go. I got to go. I got to do what God wants me to do. I don't have a, I don't have a plan B. This is what we're going to do. This is what we're going to do. And let me tell you how, what, what it's going to look like in the name of Jesus Christ. In that moment, the change occurred. God, what he occurred in the name of Jesus Christ. He goes up on the mountain. He, he takes them to a high place. Listen, stay with me. Stay with me. Whenever you are operating with Jesus, 
it's always going to a high place. Mm. Woo, Lord. Uh, the world I live in is trying to take me to a low place. It's trying to take me to a low place and convince me that this is where I need to hang out because everybody's doing it. Oh, Jesus. Uh, but whenever I am operating based on plan A with God, I'm always going to a high place. Because it's a high place where the supernatural power of God is released. The supernatural power of God is not released in my life when I'm operating in a low place. So he takes him to a high place. And he delivers this revelation of the supernatural. In other words, he does what only God can do. Mm. See, there, 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 there's, a, there's, a, there, there's a balance here. There's a dichotomy here, if you will, of God's sovereignty and man's responsibility. Uh, and and we, 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 want, we want God to operate in his sovereignty in my area of my responsibility. Let me tell you something. God's not going to make you read your Bible. God's not going to make you come to church. God's going to make you stop gossiping. God's not going to. Come on, man. Come on, man. I mean, hey, if I got the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will encourage me. The Holy Spirit will say, now, you know that's wrong. You know you should not be doing that. But he's not going to make me. God is not going to make you honor your husband. He's not going to make you honor your wife. He's not going to make you honor your mom and your dad. He's not going to make you tithe. He's not going to make you honor the authority on your job. In the name of Jesus Christ, it's the revelation of what only God can do. You got to do, I got to do what, I'm, what, I, what I can do, and then God will do what he can do. But when you come in contact with me, you're going to see my commitment to God. You're going to see I don't operate the way that you do. You're going to see the outward revelation or expression of my inward character and my inward change. Huh? Oh, help me, Jesus. Oh. oh, that we were on Tuesday the way that we are on Sunday. Oh, Jesus. Woo. Oh, my God, in the name of, of Jesus Christ. Oh, in the name of Jesus, we would treat our wives and our husbands on Tuesday the way we treat them on Sunday. Oh, help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. They come in contact. The question the Holy Spirit asked me to ask you today is, what are we revealing? What are we revealing? Are we revealing our commitment to Jesus Christ? Are we revealing our commitment to his planet? Because here it is. Let, let, let me say this. Everybody's committed to something. Huh? This is the core of it, yes? This is the core of it. This is the, the core of this message is about commitment. Everything else is going to flow out of commitment. That, that we are all committed to something. Most of us are committed to ourselves. I know I won't get a good, strong amen on the front row. Front row preachers and deacons. Can I get up? Can, can, can pastor get a good amen? Most of us are committed to ourselves. Let me tell you how I know I'm being committed to myself. Bruce Harrison, Jr., let me tell you how I know I'm committed to myself, Drew Perry. Here's how I know I'm committed to myself. When I say, let me tell you how I feel. That's what I'm committed to myself. I didn't say, let me tell you what God's word says. I said, let me, let me tell you how I feel. Let me, let, let, me, let, me, let me share with you, when you know you're operating by the flesh and not by the spirit, when you are, your response is to what makes you feel okay. That's when you know, that's when I know, that's when I know, that's when I know I'm operating by the flesh. I have left the spirit behind. I'm operating by, by feel good in the name of Jesus Christ. Because the word of God never guaranteed me, Sister Angie, I'm always going to feel good. In fact, if you look at the, 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 the picture of the clay on the potter's wheel, odds are pretty good. There's going to be a quite an extensive amount of time when I'm not going to feel so good. I will learn how to feel good, but initially there's going to be pain and there's going to be some, some problems and some crying. But I want to operate in a way that says what, 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 honors, what honors Jesus. Here's, here's the biggest piece of it. I can talk about commitment. When I'm operating based on how I feel and somebody who's operating in the spirit comes along and in love and in grace and humility 
checks me. I just get further in the flesh. I don't, most of the time I don't, most of the time I don't, I don't, I don't check it. I don't check it. I don't check it. Most of the time I just respond with no force. And so I'm, I'm, I'm trying to keep my eye on what's coming, right? You know, eternity, I don't know if you, uh, what, uh, three score and ten, 70 years is promise, you know, in this life. You live to be 70 years old, okay? You live a pretty, pretty good life in there in this life. Hope I got a few more in me in that for the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost day. All right? 70 years. But, but eternity, the, the, the song says, after I have been there 10,000 years, I will have no less time to, to, to praise him than when I first showed up. What's coming is so much more significant than where we are right now. But we find ourselves looking around and, and trying to, to live life based on how I feel. I, I got... I got, I got pastors who say they're called in the name of Jesus Christ to pastor a church going home and, and saying I'm through because I'm tired. Are you joking me, man? Because you, you're tired? Brother, please. I'm so glad in the name of Jesus Christ. Christ in the Garden of Gethsemane. Christ, when they're whipping him, when they're flogging him, when they're spitting on him, he didn't go, time out, time out, time out, time out. Everybody hope freeze. Everything freeze. Everything freeze. I am so tired. I tell you what, man. I'm going. I'm, I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. And I'll, when I get, I get, you know, get refreshed, you know, and everything, then I'll come back and I'll finish this up. I'm just so glad that God doesn't view you the way we view Him. What are we revealing? When you watch people, when you come in contact with watch you, what are you revealing? Are you revealing the supernatural power of Jesus Christ? Because if you're not. Revealing that sometimes, some places, somewhere, something's desperately wrong. And I'm not talking about like three years ago. I'm talking like like now, like today, like this week, like next week. Like it, I'm thinking, I'm thinking every day. I got a sh- I got a shot every day to reveal the supernatural power of Jesus Christ by simply allowing the Holy Spirit to apply the word to my life, not based on how I feel. Woo. <laughs> Philippians two and twelve. Philippians two and twelve says this. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Stay with me. That's a command. That's not like, hey, you know, you get around to it. This, this, this scripture is on the backdrop of, of the Philippian writer talking about Jesus and about how at the name of Jesus Christ, every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess about how Christ's sacrifice on the cross. And so he, he, he's laying it all in context. He's saying, hey, man, look. Know, know who Jesus is. Know what Jesus has done. Know as because of the cross, know where you stand and what you have the, 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 the right and the authority to do. He says, based on what it is that who Christ is and what Christ has done for you as an authentic child of God. He said, you got to have some level of urgency about getting this thing that's on the inside of you on the outside of you. But we come to church, not here in House of Worship, and we check the box. See, I'm in church, but I'm not really engaged. I'm just going to preach in the front row now. Come on, y'all. We we come to church, AAR, but we're not engaged. We come to church, and we check proverbial, I came to church box. But I'm really not engaged. In fact, when the preacher is preaching, I'm really not listening. I've already checked out. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm having my own little conversation. I'm, I'm at church, but I'm doing my own thing in church. Huh? Huh? Oh, 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 See, see, me, 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 and you, we, we gonna, we gonna, we gonna do our little thing right here. I know, he, I know he preached, I know he preached, but that don't. What I'm really saying is that don't apply to me. What I'm really saying is what God is saying right now. When, when, when is it ever that God would speak and it didn't apply to me? When would that be? So I'm saying that God's talking now, okay, all right? If, 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 if he's a man of God, if he's a man of God, God talking to him, he's talking through him right now. Because if he's not a man of God, then let me get the heck out of here because I don't ever want to be in a mission, in a church where God's not speaking through the man of God. So what I'm, what I'm saying is, Sister Toya, 
that don't apply to me. I don't even know what it is, Sister Woodard, but it don't apply to me. What I'm saying is, my flesh in the house of God, in the house of God, where the Spirit of God and the man of God and the Word of God is coming forth. There are people that go to the house of God who don't want to hear what it is that the man of God is saying. So I'm going to sit over here and me and you, we have, let's sit up here. Let's come on. Can I get my, let me get my cell phone. Let's, let's, let's see what's happening on, on Facebook. Huh? Oh, I wish I was lying. Not here at the house of worship, of course. Not here. Not in this ministry, of course. And you have believed a lie that how it is right now is how it's always going to be. Uh, you have believed the lie that you are outside of the will and the purpose and plan of God for your life. And here it is. You are not transfigured and you will be transfigured no time soon because you have no commitment to the things of God. You, 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 you're not, you're not going to work it out. You may have it in there, but you're not working it out. No, you're not. You're not going to work it out. You, you, you go with God until it don't sound good or it don't feel good. Huh? You're not submitting to God. You're not going to submit to the word of God. No, you're not. So you submit it until, until it works for you. But the moment it stopped working for you, 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 hey, hey, here it is. Uh, I'm not going to do it. Somebody call you on it. Uh, you, 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 you get upset about it. You stop coming to church. You go to another church. You find, you, you want to find some place where everything's happy, everything's rosy. Nobody ever confronts you with your sin. Nobody ever tells you you're out of order. For how could you be out of order? Because you're the smartest person in the room in the name of Jesus Christ. But I came to tell you today that the devil is a liar. And I came to start trouble. I came to start mess. I came in the name of Jesus Christ to confront the devil wherever I find him at. And if he's sitting in my car, I'm going to talk to him in the name of Jesus Christ. If he's in my house, I'm going to talk to him. If, 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 I, if, I'm, if I'm out of order, please somebody come and help me to help me in the name of because I want to be right, Brother Ron Silva, in the name of Jesus Christ. Hey man, have you been have you have you been transfigured? Have you? Have you been transformed? Have you? Are you really committed to Jesus Christ as your Lord and as your Savior? Or is this some kind of game for you? Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a religious game, it's a, it's a holy game, kind of. It's a, it's a game. Because if you're committed, there's a change that's happened. When change has happened, then you, you're going to let it get on the outside. And when it gets on the outside, it's going to have an effect on the people that you come in contact with. So nobody's looking at your life and going, wow. Nobody's looking at your life and going, wow, like in a positive way. Nobody's looking at your life and saying, hey, wow, man, that's cool. Man, I can't believe you do that. Nobody's looking at your life and saying, man, I. I see, I see, I see magical things happening in your life. I see things are different, different, different that's happening in your life. Nobody's looking at my life and saying, man, you know, I, I want to be like that. I want to I wanna operate like that. If nobody's looking at my life and saying something stupid like, hey, let's go see what's happening. just stay here forever. Because that's what the supernatural does, right? Hello, this is Pastor Tony Collins. I'm the senior pastor of the House of Worship in Oak Ridge, Tennessee. And I want to tell you a story. Um, a few years ago, about eight or nine years ago, actually, um, we helped plant a church uh, in Mexico in the Playa del Carmen area. And while we were down there, we were confronted, if you will, by the, um, the truth, the reality uh, of homeless children. Just, just a few points of fact, if you will, in regards to uh, street children to homeless children um, in this area. First of all, uh, these children are at a higher risk of danger uh, than, than anyone else. They go through uh, severe hunger, they go through depression, and in many cases, uh, most cases I would say, that the food that they have is waste food, 
which is a bad source of nutrition, which leads to malnutrition, and, and sometimes it can even lead to death. These are children that are on the street that are dealing with all the issues that are on the street. They're dealing with criminals, they're dealing with violence, they're dealing with, uh, with, with drugs. And so our, our desire, our call, if you will, uh, for this community is uh, to build a home for the homeless, to build a home for, for homeless children. And, and there, is, there is no home. There is no home for homeless children um, in, in, in this area. And so really what we need now is we need the resources. We need the funds to be able to do that. And we're estimating that um, it's going to cost about $250,000 to buy the property and to build um, this, this facility. And so if, if you won't give, who's going to give? If you won't help us, who's going to help us? Whatever it is that you give, that God tells you to give, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, by his power and his authority, that a hundred times what you give will come back to you. So thank you in advance for your gift. We praise God for you, and we praise God for the vision. We praise God for the mission that he's given us to be able to touch the lives in Mexico of the lives of homeless children. Uh, bless you. Praise God for you, and we give him all the glory in advance. Amen. Somebody said, I know I have been changed. I know that I have been changed. I know that I have encountered the one true living God. I know I've encountered his presence, his word, and I know that as a result of that, I have been changed. And that's the, the whole point of what we're doing is for you and for me to encounter the presence of God, encounter the word of God, that he might make a difference in our lives because really he's the only one that can. Have you been changed? If you have not been changed, here's a great opportunity for you to do that. And the only way that you can do that to begin that process of change is to ask Jesus Christ to be Lord over your life and ask him to come into your heart in the name of Jesus Christ. Won't you pray that tonight? Best decision you'll ever make, the decision you will never regret, and it will change your life, your eternity, your destiny, even your right now. When you pray that prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, let us know. We want to pray for you uh, and include you in our prayer list. Amen. Amen. So uh, I, I want to. I'm keeping. I'm keeping to encourage. I'm, I'm. I'm keeping the encouragement up, if you will, uh, for for you to pray about partnering with us to help us build a home for homeless children in the in, the Mex in Mexico in the Playa del Carmen area. Uh, Niños para Cristo or uh, Children for Christ. Uh, as an orphanage that we're in the process of building. Please join with us to do that. We need your help. Uh, things are going, going along great, but we, we, we are, we're not even close to the finish line, and we need you to join with us, if you will. Amen? Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we just lift up to you all those that are watching tonight and ask that you would just touch their lives and bless them in, way, bless them in ways they, they haven't even, even considered or even thought about asking you for, Lord God. And so we ask you, Father, in the name of Christ, for your purpose and your will, your plan uh, to be manifested, to be revealed in each and every one of the lives of those that are watching tonight, Father, for your glory and for their benefit. That's why we pray. Amen. So thanks so much again uh, for allowing us in your home. We appreciate it. We really do. Hope you're praying for us. We're praying for you. Uh, we'll see you next week, same time, same place. Remember, walk by faith, not by sight. And yes, it's true. God really is on your side. Bye-bye. <laughs>